here we are back at the Build America Mutual headquarters in lovely lower Manhattan. I've been, I spent a lot of my career down here. There's some good folks down here. We're talking municipal bonds. We're talking municipal bond market. We got some pros here at the table, literally at the round table. Glenn McGowan, he's co-head of municipal underwriting at RBC Capital Markets. And Kevin Dankworth, head of municipal trading at City. Uh, they're here. They're all in on this municipal bond market. Guys, thanks so much for joining us. Really appreciate it. Glenn, let's just start with you. Um, what are municipalities doing? Are they are they active this year? I mean, it's been such a brutal year in the fixed income markets. But what have your clients been telling you about maybe their appetite for getting into this market? Yeah, sure, Paul. Good, good question. I would say that you know, in general, it's been a very light year in terms of supply. You know, we're coming off of uh, the lightest month of November since 1999, and year-to-date issuance right now right around 360 billion. That's down about 18 percent year over year. And I think, you know, for a good chunk of this year, governmental issuers were indicating that uh, tax receipts were strong and a fair amount of federal aid was still sitting on their balance sheets. And so the, uh, the need to access the capital markets was, uh, was reduced. And I think you have some other uh, sectors that have been accessing capital in, in different formats. Uh, a lot of healthcare issuers have been resorting more to private placements. And so the net effect of that, and when you think about uh, the, the increase in interest rates over the course of this year, you know, you've had less taxable refunding activity. The net result of all that is a significantly lower uh, pace of issuance over the course of this year. So as I mentioned, about $360 billion of total issuance. What's interesting is if you net out about $21.5 billion of private placements, you know, you're looking at about $339 billion of publicly issued municipal bonds so far this year. What's that compared to? You know, the, the pace of uh, privates is fairly consistent with last year. I think it was about $22 billion or so. But I mean, overall, what were you seeing in 2021 or 2020, 2019? Uh, if we saw 360 this year, is that a lot or a little? Yeah, it's, it's, it, it's a little. We were in the uh, kind of mid fours in the last two years, for sure. And so as we project ahead to next year, you know, with this interest rate environment being, I think, fairly consistent, you can certainly build a case that – as the uh, Fed eventually wraps up its tightening process in the uh, you know first quarter end of first quarter of next year, um, you know, and and with economic growth expected to start to move into some sort of a you know recession, uh, that you could you know you could make a case pretty easily for marginally lower rates by the end of next year. But we're we're anticipating a pretty consistent pace of issuance as we move into next year. So a little scarcity there. You run Glenn underwriting at RBC. Kevin, you run Muni Trading at City. What does that scarcity mean for your business? Uh, thanks for having me. Uh, great question. Uh, you know, the the primary supply being lower has certainly, I think, helped uh, to mitigate some of the challenges we've seen in the market this year. Um, the main uh, headwind for us really has been uh, the mutual fund outflows that have really been um, consistent throughout the course of the year. We're, we're going on, um, I think it was 44 weeks uh, of uh, consecutive outflows out of mutual funds, um, which, um, you know, has certainly uh, provided a headwind. Um, so the fact that there hasn't been a huge primary calendar to kind of compete with the selling that mutual funds have had to do um, has helped the secondary function probably a little more smoothly. Why are those yeah. outflows happening? Is it tax loss harvesting oh or boy. are people converting to ETFs? Uh, great question. I, I think... You probably have to dimension a little bit beginning of the year versus now. I think initially, uh, you know, January, February, March, April, uh, I think it was uh, driven largely by uh, inflationary concerns. I think um, a Fed that was hawkish than it had been in quite some time. You know, you had Chairman Powell uh, throughout 2021 saying that inflation was transitory. Uh, it was pretty clear early in 2022 that that was not the case, and he really dialed up the hawkish rhetoric. Uh, so I think early in the year, it was a function of, of fear more than anything, just rising rates. Um, I think as we've transitioned later in the year, I think you're probably seeing more of that tax loss selling. Uh, some of that money is probably going into ETFs, as you mentioned. I think some of that's probably also going into direct retail, you know, just buying municipal bonds direct off the screens because, you know, those those securities are offering significantly more yield than they've offered in quite some time, especially on the longer end of the curve. Hey, Glenn, tell me about the underwriting side of the business. Do your bankers sit at their in their offices and pick up the phone when a municipality says, I need to build a bridge? Or are you guys out there pitching business? Do you go to, like, I don't know, the city of Camden, New Jersey, and say, boy, you guys need to pave your roads. Here's a bond. So I would say that uh, – 
most of the bankers that uh, that we know and most of the bankers at the large firms are out pitching constantly. And it's, it's not really just about trying to find the next deal, but trying to be thoughtful about you know, their clients' objectives in the context of the capital markets. Where can you finance infrastructure? Where can you build out a hospital project? You know, how can you manage your your obligations uh, to the public and provide the goods and services that are necessary in the context of the market? And so, you know, most of the bankers that we uh, work with are, are constantly, you know, out coming up with ideas, pitching those ideas to clients and their advisors. Uh, you know, but I think there is a certain subset of the issuer base right now that just doesn't have as much need for capital. Now, that could change as we head into a rockier economic environment next year. Right. Um, you know, and I, I think you can also make a case that with gridlock in Washington, D.C., split control of Congress, you know, we're probably not going to get much help out of the federal government in terms of financing infrastructure. So that could be another area that may be, uh, you know, shouldered by state and local governments in terms of needing to. to Kevin, bond. I'm a big uh trader of municipal bonds. I got a huge portfolio. I need to unload some city of Cherry Hill bonds. I come <laughs> in to your trading desk. What kind of market are you going to make for me? Do you got liquidity to really step up and get my trade done? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Is this Cherry Hill, New Jersey? Yeah, I darn right. New Jersey, so yeah, sure. Absolutely, for Cherry Hill. Uh, yeah, we um, we take a lot of risk in the municipal space. Uh, our balance sheet, you know, generally speaking, um, runs well in excess of a billion bonds. So um, okay. we're active on a daily basis, um, whether it's the, the kind of micro lot space, 10, 20,000 bond pieces, uh, all the way up to, to block size, 10s, 20s. And, That's where I trade. Uh, you know, so we are, uh, we're in the market, uh, we're active, and... Um, you know, it's been it's been a fun year to trade. Frankly, uh, volatility uh, makes things a lot more interesting. Yeah, absolutely. So, what's next year look like? I mean, after the ridiculously terrifying screens that we had to look at all year, you know, IN Go on the Bloomberg shows the massive losses all the way across fixed income. Um, is next year better? Uh, I think so, personally. I mean, I, you know, if, when you look at the muni market, it's actually been been pretty stable overall since about May of next year. Um, so the first four months or so w was really um, where the vast majority of the pain took place. And, and the, the muni market, the one thing it's, it's pretty good at is it can adjust pretty violently to get to valuations at which people are going to step in to buy it. And, and that's really what I would say happened in, in April, May, is we got to yield levels where, you know, you could buy longer dated paper, 20 to 30 year final maturity, usually 10 year calls, double A or better rated. Uh, anywhere from a four to a four and a half yield, which, you know, if you're in a, a high tax state like New York in a high uh, tax bracket, you know, you could be talking about taxable equivalent yields of, of eight to nine percent, even in lower tax states and, uh, you know, um, lower tax brackets that you're still talking five and a half to seven and a half percent on a taxable equivalent basis for super high quality assets. You know, that's a pretty compelling return for, for a mm. retail investor. Hey, Paul, Glenn, Paul your, ball, your bond's still getting called? Uh, no, not as much, but they were getting. Yeah, for because a while. this summer you were like yeah. crying about it yeah. every day. Well, I mean, you know, and then I got to go to the block desk at City. I'm not going to the retail desk <laughs> to move my moon. Uh, so, Glenn, Infrastructure Act, it was like a gajillion and one dollars. How do you guys think about that as a strategy for the next couple of years in terms of talking to your clients? Presumably they're going to be having opportunities to fund maybe more projects than they thought. Yeah, I think the burden <coughs> of financing uh, public infrastructure is, as I mentioned before, going to be shouldered more and more by our issuer base. I have been a little bit underwhelmed by some of the provisions in the various uh, legislation that's passed in terms of what it's done for the municipal bond market. Simple things that could have provided relief valves for our issuer base, tax-exempt advance refundings, that never really happened. Uh, you know, a reintroduction of a BABS-like program never really happened. And so I think the burden is going to continue to be uh, shouldered by our issuer base. I think that could you know, lead some to conclude that maybe you see an uptick in issuance, but our, our thought for next year is kind of a stable $385 billion type of total supply type environment. It's hard to see in this economic environment, in this rate environment, that dramatically changing, at least in our view. How, how do you work with BAM, by the way? When you're talking to an issuer, oh, um, how do you partner up with uh, the, the two of them? Sure. So, uh, you know, BAM provides credit enhancement for our issuer base. And so it, the, the net result there is issuers purchasing uh, insurance in the new issue market to buy down a lower yield. Uh, we also use it in the secondary market. Sometimes we have investors that want to insure a bond, uh, whether it's for a, a portfolio defense uh, strategy or for a, for, a, you know, for a more tactical trading strategy. So we're frequent counterparts with uh, BAM and the new issue market and the secondary market. It's all about trying to find value for credit enhancement, and we've been uh, pretty active in that regard. All right, folks.
Thanks so much for joining us here. We had Glenn McGowan, co-head of municipal underwriting at RBC Capital Markets, and Kevin Dankworth, he's head of municipal trading at City.